Yo, Counterattack Podcast with myself, Daps. Guys, keep liking, subscribing, sharing, all of that good stuff. Where do we start? Um, Carling Cup Final. Carling Cup. I don't know why I still call it the Carling Cup Final. Maybe I'm just showing my age. Or maybe I'm just used to calling it that. Carabao Cup Final. Listen, there's going to be another quick video, by the way. We've got a guest coming on this week. I just thought I'd let you know that. Um, and I've got a special announcement this week as well. So we're going to get into the Carabao Cup final. But this week, by God's grace, I've got a very special announcement. Remember I told you at the, at the beginning of the year, there's like good things happening. Listen, just know we're working. But anyway, and I said I'm going to start sharing some of the stuff that I do outside of the podcast on my channel. Because I know a lot of you just think every now and then I just record a video. And that's it. But no, I actually do some stuff outside of the world of podcasting. So stay tuned. Um, but yeah, Carabao Cup final. Listen, when I saw the starting lineups, yeah, I know I, I kept hearing Liverpool's got injury problems and everything, but I guess I didn't really take it in just how many injuries that they had. And when I saw the starting lineup and I saw Chelsea's one, I was just like, do you know what? This could be a long day for, for Liverpool. I just felt like, sorry, I just felt like it was going to be one of those days where it's just a bit too much to do for this young team, inexperienced Liverpool team. Even though there is experience in there, when you're seeing the likes of Conor Bradley, when you're seeing Gakpo, when you're seeing Harvey Elliott, when you're seeing Gravenberch, uh, who else was there? Yeah, even uh, Diaz, he's still a young... Mm, is he young? I don't even know how old he is. But ultimately, there's a bunch of team and players missing. So you had Trent obviously missing. You've got um, Sabozla missing. You've got Salah missing. You've got Jota missing. Uh, Curtis Jones. But like, there's just so many players who, who are missing. And um, and I looked at Chelsea and Chelsea pretty much had their full strength team. Pretty much. And I say pretty much had their full strength team knowing that they also have injuries but they've also got much bigger squads than most people. And the amount that that team that um, started the game for Chelsea cost, like, it's self-explanatory. But yeah, the game started and it was from the get-go, end-to-end football. And I'm not even going to do the breakdown of the game. What I will say is that Chelsea have this thing about them where you can see that as much as they've bought players, and I said this before, they've just bought potential, that's it. And potential means nothing if you can't realise the potential. The potential means nothing if what they're doing now isn't, a, is, isn't, isn't even of a certain standard. And when you look at the kids that came on for Liverpool and you look at the kids that were playing for Chelsea, bearing in mind, Chelsea's supposed to have, you know, bought the best kids around the world. You know, they're supposed to have bought Noni, um, Casado, Enzo. When I say kids, obviously, they're a bit older than 17, 18. But the young, the, the brightest young talent in world football is what Chelsea were supposed to have got. But when I look at what Chelsea put out and when I look at how Chelsea were playing and when I look at the players that they have, and then you compare it to the actual kids that Liverpool actually brought on, it's night and day. Because at least with Liverpool's Liverpool's youngsters, they've got direction about them. They've, they, you know, they've been coached in a way where, yes, they've got potential, but they're able to to play in a system and play in a way that gives you something now. Whereas Chelsea was a bunch of nothing. And Gary Neville said, you know, it's Klopp's kids against um, billion pound butlers or something like that. And you you couldn't be more correct. Um, you know, I, I look I look at the game, I look at how it went. And again, I've said it so many times, Chelsea have no real leadership in that team. They've got a bunch of players who, like I said, might have potential, but I don't really see potential in a lot of them players. And no sense of direction. When Raheem Sterling plays, you can see he's used to playing with players at Man City, at England level, even at Liverpool when he was there. Like he had he had players, he's always been surrounded by players who who were of a certain certain ilk. He, he's used to playing with players who who get the job done on a day. But you can see when he's playing with Chelsea, some of the stuff that they're doing. It's, it's, it's not even schoolboy. It's just like, what what are we really doing here? Do you get what I'm saying? And, you know, no one for me epitomises that more than Enzo, if I'm being honest. You see, Enzo, I'm not I'm not in the thing of calling 
people rubbish because he's obviously not rubbish. He's obviously not rubbish, but I'm not having him. And maybe I'm not having him because he's 100 million. But when, when, I, when I watch him play, I see a 15, 20 million pound fo um, football player, which bearing in mind, I think the season or I think six months before he went to Chelsea, he was actually bought for like 15 million euros or something like that. That's the player I see. I don't see this 100 million pound player. And I'm not saying for 100 million, you've got to go and, you know, do Jude Bellingham or you got to be Ronaldo. You got, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying I need to see, I need to see something. It's very rare you find a player that's actually worth 100 million. So I don't expect him to be, to be showing me 100 million pound worth of talent because prices are prices. It is what it is. But I expect a bit more than, than that. Endo, I was just about to go out there and say a crazy thing. In fact, no. Endo, for me, you would have Endo over um, Casiedo and over um, Enzo right now. Not because, you know, the ceiling is, is high or whatever. Just because when I play a football match, when I'm in the trenches, when it's time to get a result and get stuck in, Endo showed what he what he's about. Casiedo just goes around kicking, man, and, and, and fouling, man. And on the ball, Gary Neville said, he thought that they were getting um, a real good ball playing midfielder with Cassiedo. But now when he watches him, he, he looks shocking on the ball. And 100 million pounds, you can't be shocking on the ball. I'm sorry. Endo, not Endo, Enzo, he's just, you know what it is? He likes to look good, but what he's doing isn't good. Like he, he will try the most outrageous pass. Where, there was a point where Raheem Sterling would have been in if he had just given him the ball and he tried something with the outside of his boot and listen I'm, I'm i'm just not having him and if 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 we're in the trenches if backs are against the wall and we need a we need a result you know based on today anyway and from what i've seen generally over the course of the season you're putting endo in there over over enzo and over cassiedo endo took a while to to find his feet but you can see the vision you can see his quality and he's a player that like I keep saying, he's a player that you want in the trenches. He's a player that, oh, you mean to tell me we have to get a result. We have to grind out. We have to we have to get a result here. Come, let's go. He's ready to go to war. Casiedo and Thing ain't ready. That's not me saying they'll never be there. No, that's not me saying they won't get there. Again, they're not rubbish players, but Casiedo is what you get when, you know, you buy a player for 100 million who's only made, what, 50 first team appearances for for a team before you buy him. Enzo is what you get when a player who goes for 15 million six months before has a decent World Cup, is bought for 100 million. That is what you get. Now, give me Endo, Gravenberch and um, McAllister all day long to get what I'm saying. And yeah. And what I also do want to talk about is Van Dijk. Listen, there's been a lot of talk recently about world-class players, you know, namely mainly um Foden and Saka which obviously none of them are world class but then in a game like today I do want to single out Virgil van Dijk and I want to single out Virgil van Dijk because Liverpool had it all to do in that game Chelsea had the had the better team out on paper if if we're being honest Chelsea had had it all in their favour in regards to winning that game. You know, the players, Liverpool players looked tired at times. It was it was a case of digging deep and 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 Chelsea were just were getting the chances and you know creating chances. But through it all, Van Dijk epitomized what Liverpool were about today. He had the quality to to keep his head at all times. He had the quality on the ball, he had the quality um, when it when it was time to defend and you know, to pop up with a goal, not once but twice, even though one of them was, was disallowed, it capped off what, for me, was a really good performance. He is a world-class player. And I'm okay saying that. I'm okay. I mean, to be fair, I think the general, the, the, the general consensus is that Virgil van Dijk is a world-class player. But when you watched him today, you act, it actually makes you... How can I put this? When you watch van Dijk today, it actually makes you realise just how stupid the comparisons are when it comes to world-class players because he is a world-class player, not just on today's performance, but he's shown it over the years. He's led he's led the team to, to Champions League, to Premier Leagues. In a game like now, where the chips are down, backs against the wall, he comes out, no, 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 we are not losing this game. 
that is a world-class player and that is a world-class leader. So big him up. Also, big up Kelleher. I want to know what Kelleher is going to do at the end of the season because he's got enough, what, credit in the bank now for someone to look at him as more than just a, a backup goalkeeper. He's obviously got the best goalkeeper in the world in front of him, but as far as number twos go, you know, he's he's probably one of the best out there. Obviously, you've got Ramsdale as well, but we're not talking about that right now. Kelleher, man, some of the saves he, he makes, like, you know, normally with, with second string keepers, with the second choice goalkeepers, there's this thing where it's just like, oh, it's a bit nervy, but I sense that Liverpool don't really get nervy like that with him because they know that he's a good keeper. Yes, he's not Alisson, but he's better than some, than a lot of the first choice keepers that people have. He's, he's better than, I would say, most of the goalkeepers in the league, he's probably better than. And that's as a second um, string keeper. So, second choice goalkeeper, sorry. So, he made some big saves. Um, most notably, the one in the first half from, I think it was Cole Palmer. That was a really, really good save. That is a class, world-class save. There's the one that, where he um, blocked um, Gallagher's shot as well. Really, really good save, man. So, listen, Chelsea are in trouble, man. They're, 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 they're in massive trouble because that is a game where there's no excuse. No excuse. Liverpool played their kids because they had no choice. Chelsea should not be losing that game. And if any other team lost that game, the embarrassment would be crazy. Poch is in big trouble because you can hide in the Premier League behind, you know, a, a result here and there. And then you, get, you might get beat there, but you get a result here and there. You can hide behind that. But in a cup game where the final all eyes are on this one game and this is 11 versus 11. This ain't about tactics and, and playing the, 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 the long game like, like a league format. This is just one game, 11 versus 11 and you can't do it against Klopp's kids. No, you're, 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 you're in trouble. And Poch, if he is there at the end of the season, well, he might be there at the end of the season, but if he survives till next season, I will be very surprised because... It's just not good enough. You've got players there who, you know, even though they're not playing well, you've got good players there. And to get them playing how they play, even in, a, in even in extra time, you can see Liverpool were tired in extra time. But yet, you can see Liverpool were, were, were tired um, at the end of normal time. But then extra time comes and he's getting his team to just sit off. Sit off. Allowing Liverpool to... to to take control of, of extra time again. Like, why? But you saw them tired. And then what happened is that Chelsea just faded away as well. That Listen, I, I'm, I'm a man that just loves to watch football, but what I saw from Chelsea was actually unacceptable. And yeah, they, they I, I don't care what they do for the rest of the season. I don't care who they beat for the rest of the season. It's, it's unacceptable. And we ain't, I, I, their, their season is done right now. Their season is done. And not because they lost the Carabao Cup final, but because of the performance, the level of performance that they put in. So, um, yeah, Van Dyke, man in the match, Kelleher closely behind him. Um, Endo was really, really good as well, man. Endo was the best midfielder on the pitch today. And you know what? Diaz, Luis Diaz, he, um, is, his, is his first name Luis? Why am I mind just going blank today? Diaz was, he did not stop running. And, when other players were getting taken off, he, he had to stay on and he deserves his rest tonight because the outlet that he, he wasn't, he was such an outlet today and he gave them problems all throughout the game. He, he provided um, a bit of respite for Liverpool when they were under it um, a lot of the time and he, he deserves his rest tonight, man. He's, listen, Liverpool done well, man. And, and you know what? I think a lot of people who were watching that game as a neutral, as the game went on and you saw the foolishness that Chelsea were, were keeping up with, you kind of just wanted Liverpool to win just because Chelsea were keeping up with foolishness. And then you got the whole story of, you know, Klopp's last season. He's bringing on the kids. Listen, they came on and they fit right in. They know the assignment. I mean, they knew the assignment. They knew what is, what is required of them and they carried it out. Clark looked really good when he came on. Dan got stuck in. Um, obviously, Bradley had, had a good game. Kwanzaa came on. Like, there's this, no matter who came on, they, they fit right in. 
and they just joined in with the team efforts and you know credit to them so um, it looks like it's going to be well Klopp's final season he gets a trophy which if I'm being um, if I'm being honest I'm, I'm happy I'm happy for him because he is a good manager he's going to be a big miss but you know no more trophies please that's, that's it for this season you've got your trophy no more let Arsenal get their trophy let me know what you think in the comments about the Carabao Cup final what were you really disappointed about when it came to um, Chelsea and what were you really happy about when it came to Liverpool what were your thoughts on the game and speaking about Arsenal, listen, Arsenal are flying. Arsenal are flying right now. Yesterday's game against Newcastle was a tricky one. I was not looking forward to that game at all, at all. Newcastle are one of those teams where you'll play them and they've just got the ability to just snuff out your attacks, low block, make the game really boring. Like they did last year at the Emirates, nil-nil. Like they did at St. James's Park when they won 1-0 with that mad goal that was never a goal. And I was expecting more of the same. But where Arsenal have been in such good form, I just felt like, nah, do you know what? It might be tricky, but if we start the game right, we'll be fine. I kid you not. Within the first two minutes, I was like, yeah, yeah, we're good, we're good, we're good. Listen, when Arsenal play football like that, where everything is quick through the lines, um... We're, we're pressing high, high up the pitch. Every man is on it. It's very hard to cope with that. And to get Newcastle out of there, you see that first half performance? That's as good as a performance you will see for a very long time in terms of first half because Arsenal absolutely dominated that game. I felt like Jorginho ran that midfield. I felt like Declan Rice, Odegaard and Jorginho, the three in them together. Listen, I think it was Chai. I think it was Shai, so she, um, she said, she, she had one tweet where it's, it showed a guy getting beaten up by a bunch of guys getting jumped. He was getting jumped and, they, and she was saying that's Odegaard, um, Rice and Jorginho up against Bruno because he was flustered. He probably left that game thinking, what the heck happened there? Because he was outnumbered all the time. Longstaff and Miley did nothing to protect him. Absolutely nothing. He was bum rushed in there. Am I allowed to say that? Oh, no, I said it anyway. Yeah, he he got. Yeah, I, I, I felt. Well, I didn't feel bad for him because Arsenal were, were on top. I felt like Gabriel ate up everything back there. So did Saliba. Jacob Kirio, yeah. I know a lot of people weren't having him. And I know on this podcast, I always say, ah, oh, um, I said they were good players and blah, 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 blah. But I say, like, a lot of what I say, I'm not impulsive. So when I saw Kivio play, I also understand that you have to give people the time to settle in. But I saw enough to be like, nah, he's all right. He's got a bit about him. And now that he actually knows what's required of him in that left back role, he's going on to, to back it up with performances. You can see that he's comfortable there. You can see that even though he's not going to do the inverted thing like Zinchenko, what he's giving you is stability at the back. And and a style of play that con that complements the rest of the team. And he's reliable in there. Do you know what I'm saying? So, credit to him. I felt like Ben White was good yesterday. Saka is just... What can I say about Saka? That there, that there was a finish. 1v1. And Livermento ain't an easy person to get past. But Saka finishing it off like that, getting past him, finishing it off. Listen, he's class. He's not world class, but he's absolute class. You know, set pieces. We'll get, listen... I'm a happy person right now and and Arsenal, I mean, we've been there so many times of Arsenal where you can't get too far ahead of yourself. But listen, they're playing real good football right now and it's going to be hard to live with that. So unless they have an off day like they did against Porto, and even Porto, I don't necessarily feel like it was an off day. I feel like it finished in the, in the last two minutes was, was an off two minutes or the last minute was an off minute. But... If we come away with if we come away from that game with what nil nil, it's a good result. So I expect them to turn it over in the um, in the second half. But then I've seen too many times where Champions League at um, at Emirates where we should be winning we don't win. So but listen, they they played really really well, man. And Eddie Howe, you know what? I can't see Eddie Howe being 
I think after the summer, they might get rid of him, you know. I think for the phase one of their big project, they needed a steady manager to come in, just do little, little moves. I think that's good. But now they've had Champions League. You know, the expectation is is higher. And I think they might just go out and get a new manager in. I, I don't know. Like, remember I said that though, but I just think that's going to happen. Let me know what you guys thought about the Arsenal game. Um, who was your man of the match? I think Jorginho for me was man of the match, head and shoulders above the rest. Um, let me know what you think about Newcastle. You know, I was quite happy that we beat Newcastle at that as well, by the way. Because Newcastle, they, they, they get on my nerves. So, um, yeah. Which other games were there? Um, Man United losing. Listen, this is what Man United do. I'm tired of talking about Man United because they'll win a couple and people think, yeah, we've turned the corner. But this is what they do. Fulham turned them over at home. And Fulham were worth the the win. It's not like Fulham. It, 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 it's not like it was a smash and grab. It wasn't. You know, there's been clips going around of Bruno today jumping on the. I mean, diving around on the floor, complaining. I don't talk about Bruno Fernandez anymore because, I don't, I need to find the clip of when I was talking about Bruno. I actually need to find it. I'm talking about when he first came. I said, this guy here, yeah, as much as he's scoring these goals, when the goals stop, there's going to be a problem with this guy. And it showed there was a massive problem with him. And it showed there was a massive problem with, with Bruno because he doesn't offer you as much as his, his demeanour like, gives. I don't know. He gives this, this energy on the pitch like, I'm the man. But you're not giving I'm the man performances. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's just weird how, like, you know, United always find scapegoats. You know, Rashford... Pogba, when Pogba was there, when Bruno's there, they look at Bruno and think, oh, we, we, we need a bit more from you. But it's never a thing of you're letting the team down. It's never a thing of you're the reason. There's always, it's always something else. Do you get what I'm saying? So, you know, typical United, um, they, they, I, I don't have many things to say about them. They just, it's just what they do, they lose. They might win next week, but then they'll lose. And even when they win, they're always still outplayed. It's very rare I come away from a Manchester United game thinking they played really well and they dominated that game. No, they might have won, but you always feel like the other team were better. I saw stats about how many shots they faced in the last couple of games. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So, listen, I don't... It is what it is when it comes to them losing games. I, I'm not surprised by it. I don't even enjoy it anymore because that is whatever. Between them and Chelsea, it's like, ugh. So, yeah, I think that's it from me today. I'm going to record again tomorrow. I might be going live again tomorrow. Hopefully everything works properly this time. Um, I might watch the West Ham game live. Yeah, I might do that. We'll see how I feel. But, um, yeah, let me know in the comments what you thought about this weekend's football. And, um, yeah, that's it from me. And please, guys, follow me on my social medias, yeah? It's in the, it's all in the description. Um, follow me on the social media and... Watch out for my announcement this week. It's got to be this week. It has to be this week. If it's not this week, then I'm in big trouble. But yeah, stay tuned. And we are out.